What up, my dudes? How's it going? Welcome to Law Splaining the Interwebs. I am your 100 lit AF host, Nick Riccada. I own my own law firm in central Minnesota. It is Riccada Law. If you are ever in trouble in Minnesota, please come talk to me and do it before talking to the police because they're kind of pissing me off right now. So uh, don't. Don't talk to them. Talk to me and let me tell them to sod off for you. So how are you guys tonight? I'm so glad to be here. As I teased earlier, we have Maddox's epic mic drop soul-crushing response soul crushing response to Dick Masterson's motion for summary judgment in the ultimate trademark case. And uh, today I don't have much of an agenda because if you haven't seen the response, let me help you out. Let me bring it up for you. Here it is. That, that a big, giant, stupid, Nothing. The worst legal decision you can make in any <laughs> response <laughs> to summary judgment. You just can't, I mean, you can't do it worse than not responding. Even if you're planning on losing, you always, always, always respond because if you lose summary judgment, if you lose, you're done. Game over. Game over. So that's the state of the affairs tonight is that Maddox has failed to respond. And in that failure, he has hopped on a bike and pedaled just with all haste towards the edge of the failure cliff. And he is trying to ride off. Thelma and Louise style, the two women he idolizes most in his late, late age and uh, just drive right over the edge. Sorry if I spoiled the ending of Thelma and Louise for you guys. Um, I know it's a fresh reference and I apologize for being as old as I am. So, tonight... Since there is nothing to really review specifically, there are no documents to really go over, this is a pure Q&A primarily focused on the trademark. Primarily focused on the trademark. Uh, so please bring your questions on the trademark. I see you guys uh, in the chat and I will address some of the questions when I can in just a moment, but let me get a little bit of house cleaning out in the front. So I'm not going to see all of the chats that you've done because I'm not going to scroll back because that is that is horrifying. So if you are dropping a question at the end of this uh, little introductory rant, please go ahead and drop it again so I make sure and get it to you. And the two ways to drop questions into this are first, uh, the preferred method for me because I love making money is Super Chat. So you can click on the little money button on your chat window and that will allow you to pay some level of money of your choosing and that will put your question right in my face on my chat window. I really appreciate that uh, as as just a, a sort of, um, you know, thank you for the work that I put into this stuff. Uh, but I do not require it because I understand, uh, you know, not everybody's in a position to dump money onto some guy on the internet. And I appreciate that fully. Um, so if you do not want to super chat, it is by no means a requirement. Please tag me in the chat with at Ricada law, and I will be glad to answer your questions as I am able. Coach Cake says, can't stick around for too long. Cheers, brothers, uh, brother. Well, cheers back to you, buddy. If you have a question in addition to that, please go ahead and ask it before you drop out, and I will attempt to address it right away. Um, we could get rid of the dock screen. Uh, my moderator asked if we could get rid of the dock screen. That is possible. However, the, uh, the reason I have it up is because I do happen to have all of the docks pulled up. Uh, and so if someone has a question from one of those documents, I was hoping that, uh, you know, I would be able to quickly reference 
at least in some sort of time, what, uh, what the question is and answer it. Um, but I have to do one thing before we really get started because there is a baby crying in the other room and I am going to drop a pacifier in the baby's mouth because I believe Lady Rackets is already asleep. Uh, she has had a very long day. So Dominic Peluso says, is it wrong that I have an anime girlfriend? Um, no, but you should get it looked at. Uh, it's not presumptively wrong, but you should get it looked at just in case. Uh, Gatsgat says, if Maddox is ordered to pay legal fees but doesn't have any money to pay like bankruptcy, will he be responsible? Could that be his plan? Let's talk about that in just a second. I'm going to go make sure the baby is good, and then I will come back and immediately answer that question, and then we'll get rolling right through it. I'll be right back, guys. All right, so on to the subject of money. On to the subject of money. That's a great question, Gats Gats. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, the genesis of this question is the speculation that Maddox did not respond because he could not afford to pay his lawyer for the response. That might be true. Um, however, I don't believe that is the reason. I don't believe that is the reason. And yes, uh, Tess, I will get to that in just a minute. <laughs> Replace the doc screen with Tim Pool's Twitter feed. <laughs> if you don't know, Dick and Tim Pool are having a little bit of an argument on Twitter right now. And uh, it, is, it is rather golden. As you can see, um, someone who attempts to portray themselves as an investigative journalist displaying an absolute lack of investigation into either this issue or this uh, lawsuit in general, and then going ahead and making some very erudite commentary on the subject. Uh, I suggest you all go look at Tim Pool's wisdom on the matter. I think you will appreciate it. Uh, Weefeek asks, why does Almonds wish he was, you were gay so badly? Also, get the chat up on the screen. Oh, I did. I hit the wrong one. You're right. Uh, one second here. Boom. There's a chat. I apologize for that. Uh, I was not planning on not having the chat there, but uh, my hotkey went to the wrong window. Actually, it went to the correct window. I pressed the wrong hotkey, so that was completely technology's fault, and I take no blame for that. So back to the, the question. I don't know that uh, Maddox has run out of money because as a lawyer, once you sign up to engage in litigation on behalf of your client, and more importantly, once you've started filing documents with the court and representing uh, as, as an attorney for a client, it isn't so easy to withdraw from a case. Even if the client can't pay you, at this point in time, Lawson, Robert J. Lawson, who's representing Maddox, would likely have to submit some sort of request to the court to stop advocating on behalf of Maddox for whatever cause he may have. And there's all sorts of causes for this. Uh, for example, I withdrew from rep representation for a client who threatened to knock my teeth out. So that was pleasant. Uh, and at that point in time, I think the lawyer-client relationship is no longer viable. So uh, I withdrew representation from him and best of luck to him in that case. I hope it goes well. I really do. He's actually a pretty nice guy, but uh, he needed he needed something that I was not willing to do for him. So um, it is possible that Maddox simply ran out of money, but I think we would see a filing from loss and requesting permission to withdraw as counsel in, in regards to that. Um, I... <sighs> I was checking earlier to see if there was an announcement of Lawson's death in the news or something like that, because it seems really strange to miss this kind of deadline, especially when Lawson specifically negotiated this deadline with Birch, who is Dick Masterson's attorney, or at least that's what he claims in his motion, that the motion is made with the consent of the opposer. So uh, they asked for this extension, and to miss that deadline seems really fishy to me. So before we're too hasty, there is a possibility 
that missing this deadline is some absurdly out of foreseeability consequence like Lawson has a stroke or something like that and that caused them to miss and they would be granted a, a reasonable extension at that point uh, when when you know Tarver presumably would take over the case from Lawson I think we would see some sort of notice from the court at this point if that had happened but uh, that's that's a remote but possible uh, possibility. The likelihood is that for some reason they decided not to file. And in that case, it uh, looks like Dick is on a clear path towards victory. So let me take a look at some of these uh, these chat, chats. Um, I've never seen one of uh, Nick Ricada's or Ricada Law's kids on stream. He just says he's checking on them so he can sneak more whiskey. I haven't even poured whiskey yet. It's coming though. Uh, Andrew Gluck says she'll Asterios is Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash Asterios. And you should definitely check him out. Uh, I personally re upped my subscription to Asterios in light of all this lawsuit drama. And, uh, you know, he's a guy who needs all of the, uh, cash he can get. Um, legally speaking, would failure to respond be considered a cuck move? Absolutely. You should never fail to respond to a motion for summary judgment request. As I stated earlier, if you lose your motion for summary judgment, you lose, you lose the case. How do you mourn the loss of uh, Tyler Jones annually? Clay, that's a bit presumptuous. I mourn the loss of Tyler Jones every day. Coach Cake, I asked this while you were gone. Maddox mentioned early in the biggest problem, he had two guns. What are the chances that's true? And if it is, what do you think they are? Um, if it's true, they are uh, the guns they use to hold up the radio station in Airhead, and they literally shoot hot sauce on things because he had to do something with all of that hot sauce. Uh <laughs> Does the extension request make this missing motion significantly worse slash bias the judge against Maddox? No, uh, not really. Um, the judge would look at this. You know, you don't have to respond. There's no compelling order saying that someone has to respond to a motion for summary judgment. It's just best practice as far as your job is concerned. Because again, uh, not having your argument out there means you don't have a very good chance of winning it. Uh, congrats on your success. Did you ever imagine having 250 people watch you concurrently? No, no, I never imagined that people would, um, I never imagined that people would pay me to, to yell at the screen of my computer, which is something I do all the time. And I love that that is, uh, something that entertains you guys. Chris McLean, does that victory means he owns the whole trademark? And I was getting to this. No, he does not. Victory in this case does not mean that Dick will own the biggest problem. Victory in this case merely means, merely means that, um, Dick and Maddox will continue to co-own the biggest problem in the manner that they currently do and in the manner that they have before, which is presumed to be by a general common law partnership, uh, which is, is just a entity that presumes a 50, 50 split of costs, no matter what the actual monetary split of costs are. It presumes that what people are bringing to the table is equal. And therefore it presumes that what people are taking home is similarly equal. So an even share of the profits, what it does do, what it does do is give, uh, both Dick and Maddox notice that the other person has an equal right to the ownership of the property. And it does uh, indicate that there is some sort of value attached to the brand. And that value is then tradable as a commodity um, to anyone. You can sell your interest in the property to someone else, including uh, Maddox or Dick Masterson. Either one would be able to then sell that portion of the property. And they're already able to do this, but they would definitely know that this is the way that they would have to transfer property would be to transfer ownership, that ownership interest to the other party. And that proposes some interesting uh, questions. Tillip says, Alexa, order me 4,500 live ladybugs. Uh, good joke. Alexa may actually be able to hear me on that. Don't forget his ex-wife is very expensive, <laughs> says a ramshackle affair. I don't know if his ex-wife is very expensive. I have, you know, I think she might be the breadwinner. Um, how will the loss in the trademark suit play out with the current lawsuit? Uh, the loss in the trademark suit 
probably won't have much impact in the current lawsuit except to be a complete demoralizing factor for Maddox, and that is comedy in and of itself. Uh, Merlo Williams says, you're highly entertaining, much like the spinoffs from The Dick Show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers right back to you. Um, Gats, Gats, Ryan Holiday told me that he read the case and he thinks Maddox will win. How does it feel to be cucked by, a, by a terrible author? Uh, yeah, I love, I've, I've seen a couple, um, non-legal opinions on the lawsuit. Uh, one from Ryan Holiday today and, uh, one from someone who, uh, frequents the Madcast Media Network and, uh, suggesting that, that they had a proper grasp on the legal ramifications herein, which is funny because um, most of the independent attorneys, even outside of me, who look at this quickly find out that this is an absolute joke. Um, let's see. Inverse says, sorry, Ricada Law, maintenance plug, whiskey, Patreon, continue. Uh, yes, let me, let me see if uh, Lady Rackets is up to take care of the baby who is screaming in the background. Hopefully you can't hear that. Uh, Adam... Atticus Angel says, how long do Dick's lawyers have to respond to Maddox's opposition? Dick's lawyers have already issued their response to Maddox's opposition uh, a month ago. If you're talking about the lawsuit or I mean the trademark suit. And um, this was Maddox's opportunity to respond. There is no further response that is necessary at this point. The panel should be deciding this case outside of some extreme circumstances on the filings that have been made. And, um, if you guys give me just a minute, let me go take care of this baby again. And then when I get back, uh, I'll talk about a specific treat that I have for this live stream. If you guys are interested, I'll be right back. All right, guys, sorry about that. And a big giant props to Lady Rackets when she gets around to watching this for taking the baby. She has had a tremendously long day and she has been, uh, she's been asleep for about uh, an hour now and she just woke up to, to take care of the baby for the duration. So I really appreciate that from her. Let's get back to this. Um, oh, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Adamaticus Angel, yes, that it, that was a good joke, and I, I accept responsibility of being an idiot for not catching that at first. I'm just kind of in the zone right now. All right. Kid Carolus says, is Tim Pool's grasp on this case the most infantile you have ever read? It's close. Maybe second only to Landau's grasp on the case. Um, Adam D, does the revelation in Maddox's latest filing entitle Asterios to any no, uh, new notion or memo? You know, yes. Yes. Uh, and just so we're clear about what's going on here, I'm drinking Hibiki Suntory Whiskey tonight. Um, it is a Japanese blended scotch or blended whiskey. It is very good. Uh, although I hear they have better, I hear they have a better whiskey out there. Um, I will hopefully get some sometime soon, but my whiskey cabinet is doing pretty well right now. Uh, it does, 
entitle Asterios to file a new motion. They could, they could, and I, I have to be careful and clear here. I am not advising Asterios or Greenberger or anybody else in this case, but they would, I think, in my opinion, have grounds here to file uh, for a uh, rule, rule 11, I think, rule 10 or 11 sanction, uh, which would be a sanction against um, Landau and a sanction against Maddox for, for perpetrating a fraud on the court. I think they have grounds for that pretty clearly now. And, uh, that, that is something that were I involved in the case I would be doing. All right, let me catch up here. Uh, could Maddox and Dix each do their, each do their own biggest problem shows if they both have equal shares in the trademark, a biggest problem with Mad Cucks would be great. That's a weird possibility, but basically they would need permission from the other to use the name in anything they do. So they could work that out if they wanted to, but they could not just go ahead and start doing that. Uh, and I, I missed uh, a super chat, which was not accompanied by any specific question. It was uh, just a chat from Kevin, Kevin Soak. Uh, I believe, or Soch. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but thank you, buddy. I really appreciate the donation. Did Lady Rackets uh, do the voice of the mom from Bobby's World? No, she did not. Uh, Merlot Williams, if I sent you some cognac, would you drink it on stream? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do like cognac. I'm a big fan of wine. Before I started drinking uh, whiskey, um, I, I drank wine, so I am I am certainly happy to have some further distilled uh, wine-based beverage, and uh, I I have not tried much cognac. I have had Hennessy White, which is very good. I'm a big fan, but I have not had other cognac, so I would absolutely do that. Um, Neil Purcell, do you think Maddox's failure to respond is because he has a bigger issue in New York? Is this an abandoned case? It might be, and that that's a real possibility is that Maddox and Lawson had a chat about their chances, which I believe, and I am not a trademark attorney, so please do not misrepresent the idea. Uh, you know, I understand the legal concepts, but I am not. I am not a trademark attorney. I am not an intellectual property lawyer at all. But um, my opinion, based on the filings here, is that, and and the the general concept of business law and and business partnerships is that Maddox has no chance to win this case, none. And I would suspect Lawson may have advised him of that early on when he said, you know, I will represent you for this much money, but you got to understand you're probably going to lose this case, the, especially once once Dick's uh, motion started coming in to oppose the the action. And he started being able to read the, the counter story to whatever Maddox told him. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. They, they may have just decided to throw in the towel uh, and take their chances. Clay says, if I haven't got a DUI yet, how the how the heck has land we got like six or whatever? Um, poor planning, I think. Uh, so Clay, you are better at planning than at least Landau. Didn't Dick and Madcux do episode 108 of The Biggest Problem? Was that illegal? Um, I don't know. Did Dick do episode 108 of The Biggest Problem? I'm not sure. The question is, is it an official uh, is it an official release? If money was made from that, uh, is it being split between the parties? You know, what happened as a result of it? It's very fact specific, and I, I don't know enough about it to answer that question uh, specifically. So we've got a chat from IT Weeb says, Rip Stephen Hawking. Did Stephen Hawking actually die? <laughs> because, because, I mean, I guess. I don't know uh, if, if he did actually die. I don't know how they will... Uh, how they will propagate their their globe earth conspiracy uh clearly the flat earth wins if he dies adam smith says nick rackets you keep doing all the good streams while i'm at work i am going to explode i am sorry buddy this is just the time that i am able to do that uh this is just wait 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 did stephen hawking seriously die wow Oh man, what is that Jonathan McCarthy or McCartney guy going to do? Somebody get an ambulance to McCarthy's house. I think he might have killed himself uh, in, in, in some sort of seppuku for failing to keep his liege lord alive. Um, or maybe he'll take over the, his uh, role on the throne of the crooked chair. Um, that's too bad. Hawking, uh, I like to make fun of Hawking 
not actually to make fun of Hawking, who is a brilliant uh, theoretical physicist and mathematician. Um, I don't make fun of him for him. I make fun of him to make fun of other people who venerate him above the station of just being a preeminent physicist. While it is uh, great to be a very high achieving uh, physicist, in some cases, uh, many people would consider him one of the one of the best physicists in the world or whatever in history. And that's that's a certainly a good argument to have. Uh, you know, his achievement is great, but the dude couldn't stand up. So some people were objectively better at simple tasks than he was. And I use that as a point to point out that when Stephen Hawking writes some sort of communist think piece about societal interaction, uh, he's writing it from the person who has very much trouble interacting with said society and literally lives in an ivy tower in a mobile throne. Lived, lived, sorry, peace, buddy. Uh, so yeah, good job. Good job, Stephen Hawking, in your life. Um, <laughs> sorry for making fun of you so soon after your death, but uh, I just don't have any patience for decorum anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Dick said on the latest episode that he had to depose Rukka Kaka Ali for the trademark lawsuit. What did he mean by this? Um, deposing... Uh, someone is is taking their deposition, which is basically like taking a statement, a prolonged statement um, under oath. It's it's almost like an examination or cross examination on a witness stand, except it's probably worse. In a deposition, you have to actually answer just about every question that's asked, whether it's within the scope or whether it's uh, something that you can actually you would actually have to answer in court or not doesn't matter because there's not a judge there for deposition. So in a deposition, if an inappropriate question is asked, like uh, Mr. Ali, how many men have you seen Maddox sleep with or how many men have you seen Maddox allow uh Jessica Irene Blum to sleep with, Rucka would have to answer that truthfully. He could make an objection to the relevance of the question. Although one of the key legal issues is, <laughs> is Maddox legally provably a cuck? So that would actually probably be a relevant uh, question. You could raise an objection, but Rucka would still have to answer. And a judge would then decide on uh, a later time they would have to decide on if the question was valid or not within the scope of the lawsuit. They would rule on the objection, yes or no. And if it was ruled to uh, not be a valid question, then the answer would be stricken from the record as well as the question in any, um, in any presentation of the deposition uh, as evidence. So that's how that works. It's a great process because you can really put someone in the hot seat in a way that you can't do in court because their lawyer can't protect them from having to make an uncomfortable answer. Clay says, drink as a cheers to Stephen Hawking, the fall of an honestly important man. Uh, cheers, buddy. Do you have to drink with taco neck syndrome in honor of Stephen Hawking? Maxwell Silver says, can we get a quick prayer for all the sinners in the chat? We love Jesus here at Ricada Law. And that is true. If you don't know, I am a, uh, a Jesus affirming man and I do pray for all of you sinners, um, self included, uh, as we are all sinners in this together. And, uh, I hope, I hope you all find the peace that is looking for you on this earth. Uh, Nicholas Melchiori says, okay, Google play Iron Maiden. The Google buddy is in the other room and it cannot hear me at this time. Tinhorn says, can Maddox request to dispose all defendants in the lawsuit and would they have a choice? Yes, Maddox can request to depose anyone uh, who is a party to the lawsuit as well as many other people. In theory, um, Maddox could depose people such as Peach. Uh, Maddox could depose someone like Jamie Lynn Hughes. Uh, Maddox could depose a lot or could request to depose a lot of people. Whether the court would be able to order them in for that deposition or not depends on where they are uh, and what kind of inconvenience it would be. But Maddox would probably have to make accommodations for them to be deposed either by hiring a lawyer that is local to them to do the deposition or by bringing them to New York and compensating them for their time and paying for their lodging. So whether or not he would depose anybody uh, would be pretty interesting. Landau would not be able to conduct a deposition in California without a supervising attorney. So that would be 
Um, that would, I, I believe, I believe, uh, let me, I might, I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure um, that typically you have to be licensed in the state where you're doing the deposition. And in any case, uh, Landau would be forcing Maddox to pay for his travel. So it might actually be cheaper to hire some other idiot at uh, $400 an hour to do a deposition. It would get massively expensive. This is the problem with suing so many people. Um, you know, if you want to get to the bottom of what happened, like if Maddox really wanted to get to the bottom of what happened at Weber Shanwick, for example, he would depose several people at Weber Shanwick and try and find out what kind of investigation took place. Uh, he would depose the people on the trust and safety team at Patreon to see if Jordan Cope ever, um, ever informed them of what was going on and, and, and all of these things. He would have to depose them and it would cost every hour, every hour of deposition, uh, would cost him a fortune, a fortune. So I don't foresee that happening. Um, let's see. Uh, here's a good, here's a quick, good question. Why did Dick depose Rucka? Is there new motions on the horizon? Did Dick actually depose Rucka or was that a joke? I don't know if that's a real thing or not. Um, FSPAMSS says, how long will summary judgment likely take? Now that the motion, uh, uh, technically, this would be yesterday would be the quote unquote adjudication date. And I think typically you'd be looking at a 30 day or less response time from yesterday. But it might not be that long since they've technically had the time to consider the initial motion for much longer than this. Uh, Kevin Sock, Soak, Soch, Soch, is Tim Pool a cuck? I'm going to go with uh, the. Magic 8-Ball answer with all signs point to yes. What is the best flavor of jelly bean and why is it black licorice? Ooh. No thanks, buddy. Uh, I am not a fan of jelly-type uh, candies, so I am the worst person to ask. Uh, I went to the greatest daycare on earth and I have childhood dramas associated with jello, jelly beans and, and various other gelatinous substances. Uh, so they're not in my list of, of things that I regularly eat. Grimpify said, he says, that's how I know Ruck's real name is because I had to depose him for the copyright lawsuit. Well, um, they may have done the deposition ahead of time. Uh, or, or something. I'm, I'm not sure without having the documents, I can't comment on the purpose of deposing him. What basically the reason you depose anyone is you think they have knowledge material to the, um, material to the suit at hand. Uh, although it is interesting to find out that he deposed Raka Ali, uh, and then if, um, and then Raka Ali is off of Madcast Media. That's that's kind of an interesting development. I wonder what the time frame of those events actually was. Uh, where did the jello touch me? The jello touched me in my uvula and uh, and made me vomit, um, which is great. So now it is hard for me to eat without thinking of that. Uh, my favorite movie, man, I have, I have a lot of favorite movies, but I think I always go back to American beauty, uh, which I get a little bit of flack for, but I'm okay with that because every time I watch it, I get something a little bit different out of it. And I'm, it's just, it's one I could watch all the time. Fuzz got games. We all know that Maddox land. We, uh, watches these streams. It seems like by listening to you, they could have improved their approach to legal matters. Why is it all still garbage? I don't know, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I offered him a lot of free help and criticism is helpful. Make no mistake. Uh, it's, it's always good to have an objective or even a subjective third party come out and tell you what the ad, what the arguments against your case are. Like in a lot of ways, had they been paying attention, I gave them previews of what was to come and, uh, I don't think they took proper advantage of it. So imagine Maddox running into court and intervening like he tried during <laughs> 80s girl versus Blum. How do you think it would go down in the lawsuit slash trademark in the lawsuit? Uh, he'll likely be, I think he'll be at the defendant's table or the, uh, plaintiff's table already. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but I imagine Landau probably said, keep your mouth shut, but who knows? Uh, atheists also love your work. Keep it up, dude. And you know what? I also love the work of atheists. So I am happy to see that. Uh, I'm, I'm not one of these guys who, who thinks that you must be of a specific, uh, belief system 
to have a valid opinion uh, or to do good things. So I appreciate uh, you guys watching it and, and humoring me on any of the God stuff. Um, but I think, I think uh, atheists out there, if, if you ever want to discuss this stuff, we'd probably find a lot more common ground than, than you would imagine. And probably a lot more than, than other Christians that you talk to. Cause I, I think there are a lot of Christians out there who may not like the way I think about some things. Gats, gats, Hawking dead. Maddox preeminent mathematician confirmed. <laughs> Hi Haley, cheer up. <laughs> Haley or Hallie? Uh, I'll say it both ways. Hi Haley, cheer up. And hi Hallie, cheer up. Uh, lots of, lots of quotes and apostrophes. Uh, Mr. Kill Everything says, I'm confused with this stream. If Maddox didn't reply to the latest of this trademark, he shot himself in the foot and ruined his case. Right. Probably, probably ruined his case in, in, you know, in a lawsuit, nothing is definitive until you have an order. And technically a judge could read Dick's motion for summary judgment and find it without merit or find some legal error or error of, uh, omission of fact or reason that they, for whatever reason, do not, um, do not believe is, is valid. And they could still rule, uh, in Maddox's favor, or they could allow it to proceed past summary judgment if they believe there is a genuine dispute of material fact. So, um, it's, it's not, it's not a hundred percent, but it, it moved way closer towards that hundred percent mark with him not responding because the only argument out there is going to be Dick Masterson's argument. Uh, you said earlier that if Maddox, uh, loses, this is it. Could he not refile later? Uh, would this ruling be prejudiced? Yes, this, this ruling would be, I assume prejudiced. Uh, he would have to, he would have to appeal the ruling through the proper channel. And I am not going to pretend to know what the proper appeals channel is from the trademark and, uh, and patent board, but I would assume it would go to district court for a ruling on some sort of error of law that the trademark board makes uh, or that they are alleged to make. And then the district court would remand it back to the trademark board with, um, or the, or the appeals court would remand it back to the trademark board with proper instructions. I don't think that is a, a likely outcome in the event that Maddox loses here. Uh, atheists are stupid from Dax Desi. Well, that that's a little strong. Uh, there are some uh, Haley like Haley. Got it. Got it. Uh, I'm your resident atheist and I still love you. Oh, back at you, Tess. We all know the lawyer stereotypes. How often do lawyers actually knowingly lie in open court? That's a hard thing to quantify. Uh, <laughs> Three fourteen, happy Pi Day. It's a uh, fifty or forty forty nine minutes. I'm doing Maddox math here. It is forty nine minutes from Pi Day for me, but uh, I am happy that you mentioned it because now I have a good excuse to eat pie tomorrow. Uh, so. Uh, Zilu Seni says, what if Dick and company lose? Well, if Dick and company lose, then Maddox owns the biggest uh, problem in the universe as a trademark and can begin enforcing that trademark against Dick in whatever way possible to, um, it's important to note that the patent and trademark office does not enforce a patent or trademark, uh, infringement claim. They merely determine who actually owns the patent or the trademark. And then you would use that proof of ownership in the order from the board to pursue a claim. So Maddox would at that time, uh, have to review um, probably with someone like Lawson to determine if he thought that a trademark infringement took place that would be actionable in district court and he would have to bring it there, which would cost another ton of money. And, uh, I don't suspect that it would be something he would do, but you know, uh, I don't suspect anything Maddox does, uh, is something that he would do. So who knows? Uh, Clay Early, what do you think will uh, will be the main course for your page when the lawsuit is over? That's a very good question. Um, I'm hoping that uh, during the buildup of all these lawsuits, that uh, the fans will will help me determine the appropriate direction by providing me links to content they want to see. Uh, we've got a lot of cases out there. The Google case is going to last a long time. Um, the Alex Jones Pepe case is out there. So these are things that, uh, if you want to see content guys, I got, I got time every night just about, and I love doing this. So if there's content you want to see, let me know if I don't do it, pester me about it. I will get to it. I will get to it. Um, 
there, you know, there, there's, there are lawsuits every day. I just started covering, uh, the Walmart and, um, Florida second amendment cases. So, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of opportunity. Um, the president's always doing something interesting. Congress is always doing something stupid and the judicial branch is always doing something to piss everybody off. So there's a ton of material coming. Uh, just tell me what you're looking for. Corey Jamnick thoughts on judge Judy. Those TV judges are frustrating because they are, they don't have to follow the rules <laughs> of anything. They make their own rules and uh, the consequences don't really matter. So they encourage the drama quite a bit. Gats, Gats, if the trademark case can't be used to help the lawsuit, can it be used to support the case of uh, frivolous filings? Possibly, possibly. Um, it's, it's tough. It may be able to discount some of the... I mean, I'm trying to think back to the lawsuit complaint and I don't know that they made, uh, any complaints that were, that would be relevant to an order here. Um, I just don't, I don't think so. Uh, it, it might be used to support the case of frivolous filings, but technically Maddox just filed, um, for ownership of the biggest problem. He made a trademark filing Dick, uh, you know, opposed him. And both of those actions happened well before the lawsuit, uh, what you could maybe make an argument about was that the lawsuit was brought to influence the outcome of this case. And, and that is possible. Uh, and that, you know, is not going to lead to sanctions or a slap type recovery in New York. However, it would be a, a minor contributing factor if other factors were out there for sanctions or a slap lawsuit. Um, it would not hurt to throw in something like this and state that the, the action in New York was taken at everyone's owner's expense to make some uh, false claims to help bolster uh, the claims over here because they did incorporate the complaint into this, laws, uh, into this trademark suit uh, that could come back to bite them. But probably not. I don't want to oversell that. that. That is an unlikely outcome. Christian Scott Relev uh, says swearing an oath is irrelevant to those atheists. These atheists in their subjective selection of beliefs and morality don't trust these godless heathens in court. Oh, I was answering a question about um, about uh, lawyers lying in open court. So we are to be zealous advocates for our client, and you will see this phrase "zealous advocacy" bandied about in um, in think pieces and in and in even in education pieces about lawyers, and that means that we are given some sort of license to straddle the line on truth and lie, so to speak. Uh, if we don't know, and I mean know that something's a lie, it's hard to call it coming out of a lawyer's mouth a lie, even if it seems like it's untrue, even if it's unlikely. And a good example of this, uh, if someone linked me a video uh, about a week ago where the lawyer for Ted Bundy was being interviewed and he came to a real ethical dilemma when he was asked, when he was uh, contacted could, because Ted Bundy was arrested um, for some sort of driving charge and he was contacted by the police because he was Ted Bundy's lawyer and they didn't know who they had and he had this moral dilemma because he believed that if Ted Bundy were released he might kill again and he had known that he had already killed him not revealing Ted Bundy's identity, one, is the only proper ethical response in that situation, uh, which is confusing to a lot of people. But him violating his his obligation of of uh, privacy to Bundy would be would be bad. And it would end up being bad because that would unreasonably prejudice the court or the police against Bundy and potentially cause him to walk free uh, if if a lawyer violated their um, privilege it would taint any evidence that was obtained afterwards and it would be, it would be a, a big problem. But um, the lawyer can suspect that Ted Bundy might kill again, but he won't know it. And so lots of lawyers get a reputation for telling lies because they merely forward things on faith that their client is telling them the truth. And clients lie. They do. That's a, that's a fact that we have to deal with is that clients do lie and uh, I tell my clients not to lie to me, that we will find some sort of way to get out of it. But, uh, you know, I have to deal with the information that is given. 
Sometimes they do stray too far, but lying, like actually lying with actual knowledge um, in an attempt to influence a court case can cost you your license. If they can prove that you perjure yourself in some sort of way, uh, your license can go away. And that, you know, that's a big risk for someone in, uh, in my profession. And that is a pretty good deterrent. Um, some people lose their way and will get wrapped up in lying and then, you know, they'll get, they'll get appropriately disciplined, uh, and, and have to deal with that. But, um, most of the time I think lawyers are pretty much acting as zealous advocates. And if you don't know, zealous advocacy is Latin for total assholes. Uh, Clay Early, are there never situations where it's best not to tell the truth to your lawyer? Um, no, I can't think of any. You should always tell the truth to your lawyer. Like in all honesty, he's the one, he or she, he or she, it is 2018. There are female attorneys. Uh, they're the one person on this earth that you can likely tell just about anything to. The only thing a lawyer has an obligation to report is if they know, and I mean know, that an actual crime, felony level crime is about to be commit that puts someone else in Im imminent danger, imminent danger. Like someone's got a knife and is going to go murder an old lady who is close by. That's about it. Outside of that, you're treading the line on, on whether or not, uh, you can say anything. David Duplantier says, uh, what Carl Sagan did for science you're doing for law. Cheers, buddy. Thank you, pa pal. That's a uh, wait. Uh, thanks my dude. Um, that's, uh, that's 100 totally lit. And, uh, and I appreciate it fams. Hmm. Okay. Uh, tell us the truth. Did you cut down the cherry tree? Absolutely not. After these court cases end, would you and everyone a part of the Dick show host an arm wrestling tournament at the next appropriate convenient road rage? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'll probably lose. Um, I'm old. <laughs> Hatbuckle says, what is the least an attorney could do to be disbarred in general? And how does this compare to something like that? Um, you know, uh, in a perfect world, Landau is probably at the threshold for being, uh, the least at the least level, because if they were to find out that he had working actual knowledge of Maddox's untruth and he went ahead and did it anyway. Like if they determined the quotes around Heather were indicative that he knew that this was going on, then he would be risking disbarment at this point um, because they would be perpetrating a fraud not only on all of the defendants, but also on the court. So uh, I don't know that the court will go that far, but they're at the point where it's about to be. Making a lie that prejudices someone uh, against you in court and, and being caught in that lie and having it found to be a lie is probably the lowest level. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, uh, various felonies can get your license removed. Any, any, anything where you're committing fraud, uh, um, perjury, those types of things, that's, that's the risk of a license loss. And that's really the lowest, uh, sort of setting that that can happen. Uh, could they revoke Landry's license for life like they did with his driver's license? Yes, they can. Um, I don't know that they would, but that is a theoretical possibility. Uh, is it true that a defense attorney won't ask a client if they are truly guilty? Uh, says Andrew Sib Sibili. Um, I don't know if it's true that they won't. Uh, it is true that there's no purpose in finding out if they're guilty or not. Because guilt doesn't mean, did you do it? Okay. And that's an important distinction. Like, did you shoot someone? Yes. No. Shooting them doesn't make you guilty of murder. The, the facts surrounding the shooting would make you guilty of murder. So asking someone if they're guilty, especially someone who is not a legal expert uh, and, and frankly does not have an objective view of all the facts because they were involved in the scenario, you're not going to get a good answer out of them anyway. So there's really no point in doing it. Uh, and it's not our job to determine guilt or innocence. It is our job to prevent the factual scenario with as much truth as possible that is the most beneficial to our client and most relevant under the law. 
Once you do that, the, uh, you know, the jury of peers will determine guilt or innocence. Corey Jamnick says, would love to see a video on judicial review. It has an interesting history and most people kind of take its existence for granted today. Um, I would like to do probably a better video on it, but one of my early non lawsuit videos was Marbury versus Madison. You can find it way down in my feed right around lawsuit four, I think. Um, you can find it in there. It is in the other legal topics playlist on my page as well. And I do talk about how Marbury versus Madison, the Supreme Court decided to go ahead and take over, uh, the, the judicial review, which was not granted to them in article three of the constitution. So give that one a look. If you want more information on it after watching it, let me know. Um, I really like that video. It didn't, it didn't get a lot of play because I didn't have as many followers back then, but it did pretty well, uh, especially for the amount of subscribers I had. Um, so I'd like to let people know that that video is out there because I think it's a pretty good one and it does kind of tell that story, but there is probably more to tell. Um, I will, someone asked to please answer this just a second. Uh, Tillip says at the end of the stream, you need to have a kid for every leg this video has. Uh Oh, <laughs> here I come Duggars, right? Um, let's see in your experience, do women win more or less than men in the courtroom? It really depends on the case. If you're talking about, uh, domestic cases, women win, um, very frequently, uh, family law cases, women win quite a bit unless there's some severe, severe facts to the con contrary. Uh, if you're, if you're looking to boost your stats as a lawyer and get those, those fat experience points, uh, represent women in family law cases and, and you're on, you're on the path. I hate to say it that way. It's not supposed to be that way, but it does. Clay says it's genuinely great to know, man. Thanks. Also drink super chat and Nick drinking, uh, cancer cinema, Nick Ricada, please, or Ricada law, please answer this. What happens if a lawyer sleeps with a client? It depends on the client, but typically, um, you're done. <laughs> typically you face some sort of sanction and that sanction could involve the suspension or revocation of your license. It is generally not allowed, uh, unless you are in a pre-existing romantic relationship with that client. Kid Carolla says, how significant is this loss for Maddox's credibility? Can this be used to support an anti-slap? Uh, big, big significance for his credibility because obviously he has maintained that he is the owner of the show and uh, his credibility lies partly on his uh, self-purported intelligence. Um, so, you know, pointing out Maddox being wrong is always great. Ram Shackle Affair asks, what's your fax number? I don't have a fax number. I hate fax and rebel against it. So if I have to fax, I go to the local print shop, which is down the hall from my office. Uh, they're good people down there, and I do fax from their number. But mostly I deal by email uh, and text message when I need documents. Uh, Gats Gats says uh, he is halfway there. Ricada Law, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in regards to likes and the kids. Um, donate money straight to your assistants. Um, I don't, I don't know. Are you asking if it's possible to donate money straight to my assistants? I don't have an easy way for you to do that, but I'm sure they do. Uh, the Alex Jones Pepe vid was excellent. Surprise. You haven't heard of the save Pepe movement though. The rational skeptic, uh, TMs have been working on that all 2017. Um, you know, I may have heard it in passing, but I, I, you, it's just not something I've seen a lot of or seen much of, uh, or any of that I can presently remember. I may have seen it, but it did not impact me in any way. If Maddox loses a lawsuit and has to pay everyone's legal fees, can he just declare bankruptcy and he, he away if he'll never have the means to buy a house and only rides his bike anyway? This is an interesting question because if he's ordered to pay fees and it's due to him perpetrating a fraud on the court, then the answer is probably no. Um, judicial liens or, uh, judgments, judgment debts are not always dischargeable in bankruptcy. It's very fact specific. And if they relate to uh, fraud or falsehood or extortion, um, a lot of times they are not dischargeable because to do so would undermine the rights of the, um, of the abused party. So he cannot necessarily just declare bankruptcy and he, he away, but it would really depend on what what grounds the court, uh, set for having those, um, fees ordered. 
Is it legal to have a consensual romantic relationship with your livestock? I am of Scottish heritage, so I find it culturally insensitive to deny me this right. If not, it really depends on the state, man. You got to look at the state laws uh, around around bestiality. Um, in some states, you may be surprised. A lot of failed internet lawsuits seem to come down to the conflating copyright infringement with fair use. Any chance of a video on fair use? Love these streams, by the way. Keep it up. Yeah, um, I, I do want to, in the context of the Pepe Alex Jones case, do a more in-depth fair use assessment. The difficult thing for me is I am not a copyright attorney. I don't typically practice in that area. It's not that I can't. It's just that I don't have much cause to in my town, uh, which is very small. But I think Alex Jones has a pretty reasonable fair use case against Pepe. And so I would like to explore the prongs of the fair use test. Uh, but there is not a very good objective standard on what is or isn't fair use. So, um, yes, there is a video of that coming in the future uh, on the Pepe issue specifically. And if you want another issue in there, find a way to message me and bother me about it. And I will try and, and put it in there because uh, having more examples would only be better. Oh, man. Andrew Gluck, have you seen the video regarding the gang member shot dead in the courtroom? Daily Wire did an article about it. No, uh, I have not. Make Fox's case a thing. I want to hear this objectively and legally. If he allows, that'll be up to Fox when his action is entirely put to bed. And um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that it is. I think so. But, uh, you know, it, that would be up to him. And if if we do that, I would like to make sure he's involved in that in every way. Um, what if you sleep with your client's girlfriend? Also a very bad, bad idea. Bad idea. Don't do that. What about attorneys sleeping with other attorneys? Uh, this does happen, I suppose. Um, not in my world, right? Uh, I am married to a non-attorney and very happy about that. Um, attorneys are terrible people on the whole. And uh, sleeping with another one would, I, I mean, I assume be like sleeping with uh, the Yakuza. How would the judge know if the client is lousy in bed? Well, uh, they'd have to try them out for themselves. As the Supreme Court said in regards to pornography, I'll know it when I see it. Kid Carlos, what is your facts number? <laughs> facts number is 100%, buddy. Um, how do you handle hangovers after live streams? Uh, I try not to do it poorly. <laughs> what did you think about the OJ confession? Asks Gats Gats. Uh, you'll have to help me out here. Are you talking about, um, there was a statement that he made several years after being cleared. If I remember right, where he basically said he did it, he killed her or something like that. And I think that was even after the wrongful death suit was resolved. Is that what you're talking about? Um, I'm probably not going to be the best to answer this question right now without having seen it recently. Is it possible that Maddox came out as Heather because Weber Shamwick's next response would have been more damaging if he didn't? No, I don't think there is a more damaging path than what could have been taken um, other than someone proving uh, with while Maddox maintained that he was not Heather with without them specifically proving that he was. And I don't know how they would go about doing that. It is possible uh, that they could, but... But I think what they did is maybe the most devastating thing Maddox could have done to his case. Do you like gin? I haven't had gin in a really long time. Um, but, you know, I, I like to try whatever, man. I'm, I'm good for it. Is it possible that Landau... Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Landau made Maddox come clean to potentially protect himself versus Maddox. That is absolutely possible. It would be ethically questionable to do so. Uh, I'm not sure um, what would motivate him to do that. Uh, and the real question would be how early did Landau know about Maddox's uh, transgression? And if, see, here's the interesting thing there, because if Landau knew about Maddox's falsehood about Heather, and if he gave him advice uh, regarding that. You know, Landau presumably put the quotes around the name Heather in the complaint. So if he knew about the falsehood and advised Maddox in that way, and things go negatively for Maddox, that could be a severe uh, professional responsibility strike against Landau, leading to sanctions, leading to a malpractice suit or settlement in Maddox's favor. So, um, he might have done it to protect Maddox or to protect himself. Uh, it's, it's really hard to say that without knowing what they talk about, that gets really, 
really into the factual black hole. If Fox Mulder breaks bad and fully leaks everything he knows and Scully gets kidnapped, obviously. Would Mulder find sanctuary in Russia? I hope so. I hope so. Um, I blame Clinton and the Clintons and the globalists. Yes. And we, we always should. Uh, let's see. Is there some kind of Hippocratic oath for lawyers and did Landwe violate it by throwing Maddox under the bus and advising him to admit to perjury? Um, there is an oath to uphold the constitution, uh, that we all take. Um, but it's, it's not a Hippocratic oath. Uh, <laughs> there's a cynical joke in there. Um, no, uh, there is an oath to represent your lawyer, your, your, uh, your clients zealously and truthfully, uh, for justice. So he may have violated his oath in that way, but, but that oath is really stretchy in a lot of ways because of, because of what we have to do on behalf of our clients and advocating for them, even though sometimes we may know or may think it's a losing proposition, we have to go for it anyway. Is this stream going to be longer than your normal Let's Read streams? I don't know. The stream today is up to the chat. Uh, I don't, I wasn't intending on it being super long, but uh, you guys have me for questions. So take advantage when I get tired or when the chat really slows down, we will, we'll cut it off. We'll end it. Um, man, I'm, I'm way back here. Uh, did you watch judge Morty the transcript of the state of Georgia versus Denver Fenton Allen? No, I have not watched it yet because I have been face deep in, um, I've been face deep in some motions that I'm writing in my ongoing criminal cases that have made my blood absolutely boil. Uh, so I have not yet, but, um, I believe I might've just finished my last one today. Uh, and, and that might give me a good opportunity to watch that. What happens in a, if an attorney gets disbarred during the middle of a lawsuit, then the judge would presumably give the, uh, aggrieved party some time to pursue new counsel. If Asterios was a Futurama character, why would it be Zoidberg? Well, I mean, I think that's that's obvious. Uh, it, it, it would have to be. <laughs> it would have to be. He's the only one uh, technically rotund enough to be Asterios. Gats Gats, the one from this week, uh, the confession. I have not seen the one from this week. I'm sorry to just get to that now. I've not seen it, so send me a link on that so I can check it out. That would be great. Um, which kind of whiskey should you soak your child's pacifier with? You know, uh, a, an old one, an old one. You don't want it to be too harsh for your children. I would recommend something in excess of 15 years. Would you do a video on jury nullification or is that a subject that might get you in trouble for even talking about? No, I'll do a video on jury, jury nullification. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you're not going to get in trouble for talking about that. Uh, Fox had an interview from around the murders they held back till last week. They asked him hypothetically how the murders went down. He started off that way, but kept slipping into first person. <laughs> oh, good old OJ. Why would you ever do that? Do you now, or have you ever had bad TV advertisement for your firm? No, no, I don't. I don't TV advertise for my firm. My firm is advertised by word of mouth, uh, from friends and clients. Um, remember that I am in a small town and that is the primary way that business gets done around here. Are the chemicals in the water turning Maddox into a cuck? If it is, does Maddox have a defense for his poor legal decisions? Yes and no, respectively. Ever did a gnarly skateboard move? Not a good one, man. Uh, I tried to skateboard when I was, when I was like nine, 10 years old. And, uh, it was not, uh, not, not a successful endeavor. My friend John just came to watch. Can you welcome him as a new viewer? Welcome, John. Uh, cheers, buddy. Have a drink with Clay. He's a good dude. Regardless of any other, other oath, he signed multiple agreements to state to not drive drunk. So we see how convicted he is. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't seem very good at holding up to his promises. What are your thoughts on the behavior of the judge who sentenced the Olympic doctor. Was that the one who said, I hope you die in prison? Uh, chaps, help me out with that and I'll get back to it. Should everybody counter Sue Maddox when the lawsuit blows over? Or is it better just let this debacle die out? It is better for most people to let the debacle die out. Also, there's the, the severe problem that, especially when Maddox loses, that he will not have the money to pay anyone if they do win. 
How much do you think Maddox spent on this law- lawsuit? I don't know. I don't know. It would really de- it would really depend on the terms that he and Landau agreed to. Landau, in theory, could have taken a large portion of this case on contingency with just an upfront retainer, um, which would help him cover the work that he puts into the puts into the documents. But guys, each each document is thirty pages. Each document is 30 pages. You've got to figure five plus hours uh, minimum per document. Um, And I think that's being generous. Uh, Five plus hours in work put in. There's probably going to be more build into that because you've got to do research. You might have uh, various things to do that just take time. You might have phone calls to make or you have to reference back to a prior set of facts or a different document. Uh, You have to check up on various statutes. I mean, I would say a minimum of five hours per document and you're talking, uh, hundreds of dollars an hour for someone in New York. Um, I mean, I think at this point he's got to be pushing 30 to $40,000, but I don't know. That's if Landau is billing him in this way. Landau could have taken a contingency, but I can't imagine taking a contingency on these claims because there's just no likelihood that you're going to prevail. Do you think Maddox is self-aware of his stupidity? Uh, asks Samir al Uh I think Maddox is the opposite of self-aware of his stupidity, um, which is why everything is so dangerous for him and why someone like Landau may be, may be taking advantage of him um, at this point. So, uh, and I noticed someone, I'm not there yet, but uh, Ramshackle Affairs says $30,000 exclamation point, exclamation point. Buddy, it could be more than that at this point. You got to understand this was initiated in what? uh, November. We've got November, December, January, February, March. We're five months in. Um, Landau has another case out there right now where he is a plaintiff and he is suing to put an attorney's lien on a client who he worked for purportedly for six months without doing a single court action on behalf of that client. But he did work for them for six months, apparently. And his attorney's lien for that six months of work is $60,000. So I don't know how much time he spent, you know, actually working during that six months. But um, if he's racking $60,000 up without court, without court action, uh, I can only imagine what he's racking up for Maddox in five months with significant court action from multiple defendants. Uh, could someone uh, serve, could someone to serve summon from a different state to this lawsuit? Um, are you saying, could someone be served or summoned from a different state to this lawsuit? Uh, possibly. If you're talking about the trademark, no. Uh, like the trademark stuff is is done at the federal level. Um, so it wouldn't be statewide. Uh, you can contact Leonard French on his same platform. He's a fantastic copyright attorney. Collaboration with you guys would be worth watching. You know, I was a little disappointed in French's uh, Pepe video because he doesn't really offer any opinion about um, any of the defenses uh, that Alex Jones may have or what, 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 I guess, what track the parties may take. Um, he, he is interesting in how he brings lawsuits, uh, to people and, and reads them ahead of time. And he does some explanation. I wish he would talk a little more tactically from his experience. Um, but you know, I would like to talk to him at some point. I think that would be interesting. Uh, does your facial hair make jurors view you more favorably? (laughs) I hope so. I hope so. What law do you specialize in? I don't really specialize in anything specifically because, uh, I live in a very small town and I have to do a lot of different stuff. Um, I have to be a jack of all trades. Uh, so I specialize in whatever I'm fighting at the current time. Um, I don't like ads. No, uh, Dick mentioned Asterio suing Maddox, especially Maddox, especially if he loses his job, does Asterio have a case assuming he wins the lawsuit? I think so. I think so. Uh, I think he has a case against Maddox and Jesse, uh, for their, um, actions against him, uh, towards with Weber Shanwick. If he loses his job, I think he definitely has a claim. Even if he doesn't, he might, um, you know, the question is how much do you want to spend winning it? But spite is a beautiful fuel. So, uh, it might be a lot. Can you welcome my friend, Mike Hawk, Mike Hawk. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, glad to have you. 
If you have any questions, have fishmonster123 ask them for you, and I'd be glad to, to answer them as best I can. If Dick affirms copyright claims, can he be reimbursed for the release of the bonus episodes? Yes. Yes, he can. He could take an order from this court, and he could take it to district court uh, to enforce the copyright against Maddox. Um, the question would simply be, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Can Maddox pay? How much will he recover? Uh, that's that's all the, the question. Is it worth the time and money that you would spend on attorneys? Um, he would likely win, but there's always risk involved as well. Is failing to follow a promise the same as lying in court? No. No, it's not, unfortunately. Uh, they would have to determine that at the time you made the promise or you made the affirmation or affidavit that you were, were aware that you were intending to lie at that point, that you were intending to not fulfill the promise, um, which would require some sort of corroborating evidence generally. So if Orangutan had just created Maddox LLC and written under that, uh, how much better would shape would he be in now? Probably a lot better shape. Um, LLCs g typically uh, shield you from a lot of this type of liability. Although since he's a one man shop and it is really a shop based around his personal performance, uh, it, it might not be as surefire, um, as, as other circumstances. And I notice the stream is kind of hiccuping right now. So, uh, you know, bear with it. It'll, it'll come back. Have you ever actually played a Phoenix Wright game? No, I have not. Um, just haven't, but you know, I'm looking into it. Uh, so you're a whiskey. Are you also a cigar man? Asks Andrew, uh, Sibili. You know, uh, I have partook, uh, partaken, partaken of cigars. Um, from time to time, I would in no way consider myself a cigar man. I will leave that to much more, uh, people with much more refined tastes. Although it's something I'm not opposed to, um, being is how I'm around my children a lot. Uh, having cigars around isn't really practical. So they're reserved for me for special occasions uh, where, you know, like the birth of a child when I'm with my friends or the birth of one of my friend's kids, we have kind of a tradition to, to all sit around and have a cigar, um, you know, but I, I'm not opposed to them. And uh, I do like the social aspect of, of cigars. And uh, so, so I'm game, but it's not something I would claim to have any knowledge about at all. I rely on the knowledge of more learned men. Earlier, you and women, I guess. Are there women who smoke cigars? I don't know any personally. Earlier, you said this would prove both parties have a claim. If Maddox, uh, could Maddox make Dick remove the archive on the TDS site? Uh, that's a, that's a tough question. That's a tough question because someone's, I guess if, if he wanted to, yes, but he would similarly have to remove his archive, probably. Most lawyers have to do research. Landry just refers back to the first filings. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, his, his self citations are, are really, really out there. 60 K you mean two websites? Yes. <laughs> uh, could Maddox claim he's done more good for Dick and crew than since than not since the Goss cannon is helping the show? No, I mean, he could claim it. He could claim it, but there's no way to know what the show would have actually done outside of Outside of this, you know, uh, Dick's an entertainer, professional entertainer who's been doing it for a long time. Um, can you send me a cigar, Anthony Salamanca? Yes, absolutely. Send if you want to send me a cigar, do that, and I will find a way to stream it. Although I'll have to, I'll have to rig that up because there's there's no way I'm getting away with smoking a cigar in my office, um, in my home, and uh, my my work office. It is illegal to smoke indoors in Minnesota. So, but I will find a way. I will find a way. But no, uh, there's no no way to know what would have happened to Dick's show absent Maddox's lawsuit intervention. So no, he could not he could not reasonably make that claim. Uh, the judge said he would die in prison. Uh, you know, judges do stuff like that from time to time. Uh, I have had a judge ream out. A, a not my client, but someone I was helping out with uh, as they were making a guilty plea. And um, it's a shame when they do it, but there's not it's not typically impeachable. And the, the question would be, um, you know, does their attitude show some sort of problem, uh, prejudice 
that uh, that influenced the judge's decision and then and then prejudiced somebody against the uh, against the defendant. And and that's why judges shouldn't do that. Is because if they let slip those sort of prejudices, you know, convictions can be overturned. How often have you actually had court in front of a jury? Uh, not very. <laughs> jury cases are really pretty rare unless you are a uh, unless you are a jury trial specific attorney. And I am not um, in my county. They are exceedingly rare. They're exceedingly rare to have uh, court in front of a jury. Um, so typically, you know, we, we're acting in front of judges and then making plea agreements and stuff like that. And, uh, and that's how we get favorable results for our clients. Going to jury is expensive and time consuming and no one wants to do it. Not even the judges or prosecutors, uh, tort reform, yay or nay. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that's, that's counterintuitive to my profession, but yes, you keep mentioning how small the town is. Do you have trouble? with becoming familiar with, uh, particular jurors. Um, like I said, just a second ago, uh, the amount of jury trials that we run is exceedingly low. And, uh, no, that's, that's not an issue, uh, for me. And if, if you do develop some sort of relationship with a, with a particular juror, they would have to be removed from the case. Mike Hawk is a joke name. Sure is. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, I will also welcome your friend, Mike Hunt. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for taking my genuine and serious uh, stream in which I benevolently answer questions and making a mockery, making a mockery of it. Uh, since Spite seems to be the coin of our realm, could Asterios or any other party acquire his character Maddox or his ownership of the biggest problem in the universe? Yes! Yes, they could. It is possible. It is not necessarily um, the easiest thing to do, but they are possible outcomes. They will not happen at this trademark ruling. It would have to be something that would probably have to be negotiated in a, in a lawsuit, uh, settlement, um, in regards to damages that Maddox would owe. But yes, those are things that, that are owned by Maddox and have value. And therefore, those things can be traded for value uh, at the agreement of, of another party to settle something. <clears throat> uh, Arturo, our Prima Fascia says, Arturo uh, Fuente Gran Reserva. You can thank me later. I will look it up. Uh, are there ever instances where poorly written documents get someone off the hook by a lawyer, cl lawyer claiming that wasn't what I meant and they read it wrong? Uh, I don't know of any. I don't know of any. Um, I guess, you know, anything, anything is possible, but, uh, I do not know of anywhere that has happened. And, and the, I did it wrong defense tends to not be one a lawyer would, would want to make. Um, they can get, they can get in trouble for, for having done it wrong in the first place when they should have known better. Uh, let's see, where are we? Sorry, I lost my windows for a second there. Uh, let's see. Uh, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, and sometimes it's just a big brown dick. Uh, I got your respect. Let's see. Uh, there are so many questions. I think I'm losing. I think I'm losing it. Uh, would you pay 60K to take a man's last 30K? Seems worth it to me. How much do you think Spite is worth two to one ratio? It could be, you know, um, spite can be worth a lot more than money. It, it absolutely can. Are you a bong or a spliff? I do not, uh, I do not smoke weed. Um, uh, so you're saying you partook, but did you inhale? Uh, yes. With the cigar, I did inhale, but, uh, I do not, I do not smoke weed. I'm the resident, resident woman who smokes cigars. Looks like Jamie Lynn Hughes is as well. Um, will you make an undertaking to buy me a beer? Uh, if you're 21 or older, I would, I would absolutely buy you a beer if we have the opportunity to do so. Uh, your, your friend Hugh Jass is a first time watcher as well. Okay. Okay. Welcome, Hugh. <clears throat> All right. Uh, was that an admission that you do not know the way? Yes. Uh, you will find a way, but do you know the way? <laughs> 
Do you think Maddox wrote the original complaint? I did at first, but I'm pretty convinced at this point that Landau did. The uh, the grammatical and punctuational errors, uh, those alone, I think, point to Landau. And they're consistent here, and they're consistent with his other cases. Can I send you a pack of treasure London cigarettes? You can, but I will not smoke uh, cigarettes. But uh, I will I will try to prominently display them on the stream. Uh, when you whip out your cigars with your friends, do you guys compare to see whose cigar is the longest? Absolutely. Uh, if Maddox had filed trademark in New York and Dick opposed, would it have served as grounds for Dick having business operations in New York? No, trademarks are federal. Uh, there's a federal trademark board. So um, filing it in New York would just be proper uh, venue, not a jurisdictional question, and would not uh, expose Dick to the stream of commerce in New York. Uh, take it easy. All good stream. Look forward to your future content. Thanks. Kenster 1790. If you ever get back to listening to this and probably a couple minutes back, have you tried Canadian whiskey? You know, I've had crown, uh, but I don't have any recommendations. I haven't tried any particularly good stuff. Um, what's the most reliable way to get out of jury duty with no issue? I, I really don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I guess maybe hit on the judge. That'd be good. Is it an indictment of the system if everyone prefers non-jury legal actions? Yeah, absolutely. Our system is trash. Like, we might have the best trash around. I don't know if that's true, but our system is trash. Don't let anyone, don't let any, like, eighth eighth grade civics class steer you in the wrong direction. Uh, our, our system is just garbage. Why did you become a lawyer? I became a lawyer because <laughs> I moved out to this small town uh, working in financial institutions and my job was no longer able to be remotely done. And rather than uh, moving back, moving back to the Twin Cities or commuting two hours each way every day, uh, I decided not to do that. And after a brief um, stroll around town to see what I could do uh, with my existing skill set and experience, I had decided to become a lawyer. That's because everybody needs a lawyer. With you on my side, can we get the biggest problem? Property rights. You can be Maddox. Oh, Clay. Not with that. Uh, Heart from Christian Scott Relev. Thank you so much. Uh, Gargle Buckets also sends a super chat. And I think I already answered Zar uh, Zarthur's super chat. Do you think Maddox drafted the OG complaint? Um, I was just getting to it, buddy. I was getting to it. No, uh, I think Landau did. If that's not clear. Does anyone feel like our beloved JD is not drinking swiftly enough this eve? Uh, I am not drinking a lot this evening, no. And that is because I do have an early morning meeting and I also have court tomorrow. So I'm trying to keep down on that. Wouldn't want to be, wouldn't want to have that hangover that I don't want to deal with. Could Dick get the court to order Maddox to watch Titanic in lieu of ordering to pay damages? No. Uh, unfortunately, courts are not good for those surgical type uh <laughs> Those surgical type judgments, um, you know, that that would be something they would have to work out uh, in their own way. OK, let's see here. Hat buckles uh, have would you have. Have slash would you had have absinthe all proper with a flaming sugar cube and a slotted spoon. Why? Why not? Also, mad love to you and yours. Um, you know, I, I will try it, but uh and I'll try it because I haven't had it. So, sure. Sounds great. Uh, mad love right back at you, buddy. Uh, I, I am genuinely trying to make it down for Road Rage, Texas. So, hopefully, we will make that. Um, let's see. Could Trump pardon Maddox from paying damage? And would that make Maddox's head explode? No, I don't think you can pardon someone from a uh, civil from a civil action. Uh, the way he would pardon it would be to pay any fines or fees that he would have to have. Best way to get out of jury duty is to quote St. Augustine. Seeing unjust law is not a law and you cannot betray your conscience. You know, that that's a good way to do it. Uh, Dax Desi, uh, you love my stuff and I love your stuff back, pal. In lieu of paying... Okay, uh, <laughs> attorney's fees, would it be possible for Maddox to negotiate to surgically remove his balls and presenting it to the defendants and having it travel like a Stanley Cup? If the defendants are into that, man, <laughs> they could do that. <laughs> uh, Tess, what's the difference between... Uh, oh, me or Tess, what's the difference between not being able to practice law and being legal counsel slash defending as a friend, associate, and not a lawyer? Um, 
the difference is if you have a license, you should really avoid doing that uh, unless you're licensed to do it in that state. I mean, you, you don't have to, you don't have to charge people to represent them in court. So you can represent a friend or a loved one, uh, pro bono. You can do that, but you have to be very clear about what that advice is. Uh, thank you very much for a ramshackle affair or from ramshackle affair, uh, for the super chat. Matthew Osborne asks, if you hate black licorice, you'll probably hate absinthe. Yeah. And, and I may, but I'll give it a try anyway. Uh, been looking for a bit and couldn't find a definitive answer. What address should the cigar be sent to? Uh, Anthony, it should be sent to my work address, which is 2015 uh, First Street South, Wilmer, Minnesota, 56201. You can also find that at uh, facebook.com forward slash Ricada Law. Uh, the, the address is on there, or I believe it's also on Google. Um, so you can check it. You got here 20 minutes late. Are there any documents to go over? There aren't specific documents to go over. Although I do, are you guys interested in a bonus document? Uh, a bonus document, one that I did not mention earlier because it was redacted by the court. Is anyone interested in seeing the redacted lawsuit doc or uh, trademark document? Um, I don't know. I don't know if you haven't seen it. Uh, but I did, I did save it before the correction was made. Uh, so, I mean, I guess I can scroll through it really quick. It's not super interesting. It's not super interesting, but, uh, looks like overwhelmingly we have yes. So here it is. These are all of the documents, um, from Uzunian, uh, I believe that I have access to. And this is, you can see what happened here. <laughs> the redaction was attempted uh, and it did not go very well. Um, but th this is, I'm, I'm not going to read through all of this. I'm not going to read through all of this, but uh, you know, I'll try and scroll through it. And if you really want to read it, uh, go ahead and pause the videos uh, on your playback. Fishmonster, man, you're not gonna you're not gonna catch me anymore on these uh, jokes. You're not gonna catch me. Okay, so uh, this is the applicant's confidential response to opposer's first set of interrogatories. So Dick sent uh, some interrogatories to applicant Azunian, and uh, Azunian has answered those interrogatories. And as you know, most of these documents were redacted. Um, <laughs> be a good boy now. I, I am, you know, uh, I don't think there's anything in here that the court can compel me not to reveal. Uh, I have acquired these documents legally. They have not been acquired in any surreptitious or illegal manner. And, uh, I don't believe that there's any rule that I am breaking by revealing them. So, um, you know, uh, and, and, they're probably going to be disappointing. <laughs> They're probably going to be disappointing to you guys. But uh, so interrogatory number one. So this is where you can see the answers to here uh, to these uh, questions. And guys, if a name does appear in here, obviously leave that alone. Uh, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'll ask for the disclosure. Yes. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, don't talk to anybody, you know, if, if their name's in this, um, at the moment, these are not ruled on whether they are confidential or not. Uh, you know, the, the court has, has determined, has not made a determination on whether they are confidential or not. Uh, the Maddox party wants them to be confidential and Dick's party does not want them to be confidential. And, uh, typically these things would all be absolutely open, uh, as there are no, Bank account numbers or social security numbers are specifically personally identifiable information in them. Um, is there a case for Bernie Gears? I don't know. I don't know. 
All right. So uh, interrogatory number one, identify each person you will or may call to testify, whether fact or expert witness at a trial in this proceedings. For each witness, please provide the following as applicable. Uh, the subject matter for which the witness is expected to testify and whether the witness is an expert witness, the substance of the facts to which the witness is expert, expected to testify. Uh, hold on just a second. Yeah, this just has names on it. It doesn't actually have any addresses or anything like that. <laughs> Ricada getting sued for $20 million incoming. Could be. Uh, summary of any opinions that the expert witnesses have formed. Each expert witness's profession or occupation in the fields. List of all depositions given by the person in the past five years. Specifically identifying the name. So uh, let's go through these first two. I don't know if I'm going to actually do all of them. Because, again, I don't... I don't you know, I don't want to even come close to doxing anyone in this in this sort of thing here. Uh, that's not the that's not the rule. George Azuni, an applicant, will testify as to his conception and continuous and extensive use of the blank in the universe family of trademarks beginning in 1997. Now, what's important to note is that he doesn't have a family of trademarks and a family of trademarks is not a thing. I think we discussed this before. A trademark of a specific thing is a thing. A trademark of a family of phrases is not a thing. So this is a problematic statement from the get-go, and I know you guys love the word problematic. Um, beginning in 1997, that he created artwork and content for websites with many millions of visits under those marks, a comic book that sold for thousands of copies, a popular YouTube channel, less popular by the minute, and a profitable online store. And that is... I mean, that might be true. I don't know. Applicants, fan base, ownership of related domain names, ownership of audio recordings, editing of the podcast, etc. cetera. Uh, Dax Herrera, a poser, assuming he testifies truthfully, will admit there was never a partnership or a joint venture, uh, venture supported by an agreement as to ownership of the podcast or the trademark that a poser's only value added to the podcast was his on-air presence that prior to the podcast and presently a poser has no significant brand value or fan base that after June 17th, 2016, a poser encouraged the public to download episodes being hosted by a fan rather than pay for premium content that since June 17th, 2016, he has been harassing applicant and encouraging others to harass applicant. Let's talk about this real quick. <laughs> so, um, here's the deal. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like even assuming that this answer is truthful, it doesn't matter because let's just suggest the possibility that even if Dick has no fans, even if he has absolutely zero fans and they start the podcast, and even if he has absolutely zero dollars, and even if he didn't provide sound equipment, and even if he doesn't do anything but just shows up on the podcast and contributes to that podcast, the presumption is still equal ownership. It is still equal ownership in a joint venture because the, core, the, the patent trademark board has no business determining what contract might have existed outside of evidence that a contract did exist. And if you think that the opposer is worth less than 50%, then you should have negotiated that ahead of time. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, this is cool. I can see down a little bit further than you guys, which is good. Uh, there, there. And, um, yeah. And actually we might have to, might have to scroll through this really quickly. Cause the next bit is a bunch of names and the, really the only two important ones, uh, <laughs> the only two important ones are Dax and George. And I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to dox anyone. So Let's scroll down up here. Or wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I talking about? These are not redacted. These aren't redacted, are they? Nope. All right. You're all on chopping block. <laughs> 
Never mind. Caution is thrown to the wind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Randy Kean is the podcast manager. Uh, he will testify. Sorry to dox your last name, Randy. Um, will testify as to his conversations with Herrera regarding ownership, opposers, misconduct, termination of Herrera's involvement with the podcast and distribution of work for the podcast, nearly all of which was done by applicant. I'm sure Randy will testify to that. Sean Jacobson will testify as to editing episodes, responsibilities and duties and distribution of work. You get a dox, you get a dox and everyone gets a dox. <laughs> <laughs> Hayden Blaze Lewick, a.k.a. Uh, Ash and Marill, Reddit, reddit.com alias, will testify as to his hosting of premium content, copyright theft, and his communications with the poser RE the same. <laughs> Hayden, if you get the opportunity to see this, have fun testifying to your copyright theft. I'm sure that's what you're going to go into court and say, you know what? I committed copyright theft. You were right. <laughs> Bookham Dano says, uh, could Sean be considered a partner in this joint venture since he also showed up and contributed? Probably not. Uh, my understanding was that Sean was uh, some sort of paid, although underpaid, help, and that, that was the understanding from the get-go. Uh, according to Maddox's own interview, and I covered this in one of the early videos, he admits that he and Dick co-created this podcast. Like he, he flat out says that he and Dick had pitched some shows to a couple different places and then conceptualized this thing. And then he talks about how it was, it fit in with his brand and, and stuff already. So it seemed like a natural fit, but the words that he used there clearly indicate that this was a joint venture at that point. They redacted everything the next day, like almost the entire thing. Yes. And, and the things that they redacted, uh, Gats Gats are in red. They are the red outline things. Those are redacted. This stuff that is not in red outline was not redacted. Uh, just imagine Landwee could have been you if only he'd stayed at home and streamed instead of driven around and gotten arrested. And he would still be driving today. Uh, let's see. Um, Jessica Irene Blum, studio administrator. Oh, is that her title? Is her title studio administrator? No wonder all of this happened. No wonder. Is anyone surprised that she has been given the title of studio administrator to be contacted through applicants council? So uh, Jessica Irene Blum cannot even be bothered to be contacted. Um, you have to go through applicants council, even though she's the one with the restraining order, was a witness to various conversations between the parties over the past two and a half years. Applicant has yet to identify any expert witness, but will make its expert disclosures on or by February 2nd, 2018. So that's not going to happen. Um, explain in detail who owns the existing podcast and identify all documents or communications that support this explanation. So remember, this is Dick asking Maddox these questions and Maddox is an answering truthfully. Yeah, the first round, the red, was what was supposed to be redacted, but when they fixed it, they redacted almost the entire document. Well, that was their mistake, I suppose. And yes, I know whose mistake that was. Uh, but too bad. We're going through it. Applicant objects to this request as vague and ambiguous in that the term owns the existing podcast is not defined. It is unclear exactly what ownership rights are being inquired about. So this is a point of art in interrogatory and interrogatory responses. When you are asking a question in an interrogatory, be absurdly specific to get all of the information that you need, but to get the information that you need. If you choose to uh, be at all vague, they will simply say, well, we have no idea what you're talking about. Because when you're answering an interrogatory, um, everyone forgets how to speak basic English or communicate in a sensible way. So what does it mean that Maddox failed to reply to Dick's motion? Uh, Andrew, I answered this earlier, but I don't think you were in the stream yet. Uh, it means that Dick is much more likely to win, although it is not guaranteed. Uh, and winning in this case, again, is just the recognition that ownership is split evenly between the two parties rather than uh, fully for Maddox. Dick does not and has not made a claim of full ownership of the biggest problem in the universe. And I think if he were to do that, it would be unreasonable on its face. 
no one thinks that Dick solely owned Biggest Problem in the Universe based on any of the stories he's told or anything that has come out in the interim. So um, he is maintaining the fact that he is a co-owner, co-creator, and entitled to 50% ownership of the entity that owns the Biggest Problem in the Universe. My friend who came by is talking over the stream. How should I roofie and take him by surprise? Uh, two by four. On a scale of land out of 10, what would you rate Maddox as trademark lawyer? Lawson seems competent. Um, I think he's just been given a garbage case. Although he didn't respond to the motion today, so maybe he isn't competent. I don't know. I mean, this is... Uh, guys, talk to lawyers who work at law firms. Miss missing a summary judgment delay or date... Missing a summary judgment response date can get you fired. Uh, Lawson is a partner at his firm, so he's probably not getting fired. But it could, I mean, it's its a bad thing to do. I see. Uh, thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, there's insufficient. Okay, so uh, they say we don't understand what you mean because we have gone stupid. Um, and given the opposition is about trademark rights only, question about... Uh, other ownership or IP rights may be irrelevant or not pertaining to the claims and defense in the action. So even though this is about the trademark of the name of the podcast, saying who owns the podcast is apparently a different question to them, so they're refusing to ignore it, uh, or choosing to ignore it. There's insufficient proof of any partnership or that opposer owns any rights in the trademark. Um, I mean, that's presumptuous because there's no proof of a non-partnership. Uh, there's, there's actually significant evidence that a partnership did exist. Uh, applicant owns the rights in the mark at issue as applicant created the in the universe family of marks and commenced use and developed secondary meaning. And the biggest problem Mark was merely another family member owned by applicant, but he didn't actually own these. He didn't actually own those things. Um, he does not have registered trademarks on any of those things to my knowledge and even if he did, even if he trademarked everything in the universe except for Biggest Problem in the Universe, it could absolutely still be and presumably would still be co-owned by both of them and not by him. Uh, who is better, Landwe or my blown out butt hole? Uh, the second. The second. As the state of law on internet things currently is... Couldn't one argue dick and all parties speak into a void? Anyone with hurt feelings is choosing to subject themselves to this. I mean, you can argue that. But, um, you know, there is there is a history of, of defamation, even if it doesn't reach the ears of the defamed um, before the Internet, back in the days before the Internet, when, when uh, companies would publish defamatory things in, say, a magazine or circular and distribute them in the town where the uh, where the person lived or worked or something like that, they found defamation in those cases, even if the person never saw it themselves. It's because their reputation could foreseeably suffer damage. So um, while I agree with the speaking into the void sort of concept that, yeah, you can just close your eyes or turn it off or whatever, uh, the courts have found ways to attach defamation in those types of cases. Um, let's see earlier, later in the document, they claim that Maddox had an earlier podcast called the best podcast in the universe. Would that establish what he is talking about? No, nope, not at all. He needs to have, you know, it has to be the biggest problem in the universe. And I mean, similar marks that are confusing, uh, are not allowed either, but I mean, saying the best problem in the universe uh, or the largest problem in the universe, those might not even be infringing marks. It has to be almost identical. Just got back from the liquor store. Cheers. Cheers to you, Pony Cordero. Thank you so much uh, for always being a good uh, contributor on the stream. So communications include those between the parties, both orally and emails and opposer statements to Randy Keon. This was never a partnership, which is... Not, I'm guessing an out of context uh, snippet of of Dick saying that there was never equality in the production of this, not in the legal term of this was never a business partnership that was created and organized under California law. 
uh, or, or U.S. law. Applicant's ownership of the brand was also stated in a March 4th, 2010 email to the opposer. Uh, explain in detail why the trademark application initially stated the mark had been commenced uh, in commerce since May 20, 2014, and identify all documents. Applicant was prosecuting the trademark application without assistance of counsel until the opposition arose in the application filing on January 23, 2017. The first use and first uh, use and commerce dates of 5 20 2014 11 2014 were when the podcast and sales under the mark began. Boring. Um, look, guys, my throat is starting to get very hoarse. The questions have slowed down quite a bit in the chat. And I mean, there is this document here, uh, and I would like to do a video on it. Um, let's look at some of this redacted content. I mean, this is a stupid mug. Like he's trying to claim that this is some sort of business, uh, property. Like, like this is helpful. Uh, here's, here's a good picture of Dick and some words. <laughs> this is Maddox showing that Dick is not in the thumbnail, the official thumbnail for this show. Show's episode even included applicant's sole copyright mark <laughs> down here, um, that, which apparently is supposed to mean something. Um, because when you put a copyright mark on something, it definitely means you own it. So all of you go out, by the way, and uh, and grab like you know a famous picture and put your own copyright mark on it, and that proves that you own it. Uh, that is helpful legal advice that you should definitely not take in any serious way. So here you go. Uh, here's Maddox's stupid shirt that you can buy. Uh, I would love to speed the questions back up. I mean, you can if you want to, but um, you know, the we're we're coming up on two hours on this stream, and I don't I don't know if I want to drag this out too long uh, because I'm probably going to do another stream on Friday, depending on what drops uh, in the law in the lawsuit and. Um, whatever happens here, although it will be mobile again. So that could be very interesting. Um, here's Dick's statement of what am I a copyright police? Uh, I believe this is the document in which Maddox posted a screenshot of all the podcast files, which reveal he did all of his audio editing in a video tool pad form. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, you know, I think I am going to do a separate video or stream on this document to really go through it. Uh, I, I wanted to let you guys know that this is still out there. I have not forgotten about it. Um, look, uh, Maddox presents man points by Dick Masterson. And this is, this is a thing written by, uh, Dick. Good job. And then here's some emails, uh, that have passed. What did this email say? The name, the best blank in the universe is intrinsically linked to me. So Maddox is citing his own email as evidence after the creation of something uh, that, uh, let's see, I have a website titled the best page in the universe, best comic in the universe, an online store called best store in the universe. And I've already announced my webisode, which I've put on hold for the show, which was titled the best show in the universe. And even if the title changes, it will, I will still be intrinsically linked to this show because I'm about to launch a talent search on my website and blow the lid off this project to my fan base of millions. That was in 2010, folks. 2010. Did he launch that talent shirt? Is that is that the is that the podcast network and the stupid and the stupid uh what you call it? This um if the project falters, would I have at stake in this? Uh, isn't just this project, but my entire brand. Notice how he's cutting off large relevant chunks of this email. This email isn't about who owns the mark. This email is about the risk that Maddox is undertaking. And if it was about who owned the mark, he should have included that in there. Um, this doesn't talk about who will own the upcoming show. It just simply says that the title of the, the show is linked to Maddox's brand. But that doesn't mean Maddox owes it. Doesn't mean Maddox owes it. Uh, so... You know, here's here's people paying for stuff. Uh, great. This is pointless. A bunch of thumbnails. Who cares? This ugly AIDS uh, addict on a uh, AIDS addict. Oof. Maddox, how can you be addicted to AIDS? That's not good. This AIDS addict on a throne here. Um, 
Yeah, I'm I'm gonna stop going through <laughs> this document because it's it's not really like I'm trying to remember if there's anything specific in here that's good, but not really. I think we've been through most of this. Anyway, the moral of this story is I'm gonna do this on another stream. But this stream, I think, is coming near its logical end. I am very tired, and I have to get up in the morning. And uh, and the questions have definitely slowed down. So let's uh, let's call this a day. Let's call this a day, and and we will get back to. Um, well, that was weird. We will get back to this document at some point in the future. And uh, and thank you all so much for watching, guys. Um, I am. <laughs> Alexa's going nuts out in the other room. Uh, thank you guys for watching the stream. Uh, and for those of you listening at home, I should have put this disclaimer up front, but this is, this is a Q and a stream. So it is not going to be a, a nice smooth thing. Uh, come join the live streams. I know, uh, watching them after the fact isn't always, uh, exciting because of the live nature of it, but, uh, do come and join us. Um, have fun with the drinking games and, and just enjoy the the chat, because the chat is a riot. I like to go back and, and read some of the chat because I miss a lot of it. Uh, but uh, the long story short, the summary of this stream. So uh, maybe I should put a, a timestamp to here for people who want a too long don't watch of it. But uh, <laughs> the, the story of the day is that Maddox did not respond to Dick's motion for summary judgment. It means that Dick will likely win his motion for summary judgment absent some gross error of law, which I, who is admittedly not a trademark attorney, did not notice, but uh, Dick is represented by what appears to be a competent trademark attorney, and I believe that uh, if if there were some sort of error that uh, he would have corrected it at this point. And reading through it, nothing jumps out that would... That would uh, rule in Maddox's favor. It looks overwhelmingly like Dick should win summary judgment on this case, and we will be watching for that. So, uh, other than that, um, you'll have to listen to the stream for a bunch of Q&A. Come join us for more Q&A sessions. I really appreciate all of you guys who did the super chat and who tagged me in the regular chat. Uh, love interacting with you guys, and I will see you on Facebook, Reddit, uh, the IRC, Twitter, um, or Patreon. And that's just one last reminder, hit patreon.com forward slash law explaining. Uh, if you're a contributor of five bucks or more, you can join the discord and, and send me messages all day. And we do uh, live chats every Wednesday in which you can ask me all sorts of questions and, and hear various stories and, and stuff like that. So, uh, peace out guys. Keep it 100 fam, super lit stream. Uh, my dudes, uh, my guys, and uh, y'all have a good night, word, peace, all of the cool slang, and uh, I love you. I'll see you later. Oh, yeah, plug my Discord. I did plug my Discord. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, keep up. Keep up. All right. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to blank the screen out, and then once I see it go blank on my end, I will be ending the stream. So y'all have a good night.